either that was the best darn Jerry Anderson day ever, or we've been kidnapped by... Oh, it's the latter. Um, hello, whatever your name is. So, these are the Earth people. What a puny lot. Oh, well, that's hardly a nice welcome, is it, Marina? I mean, what do you really know about me, for instance? Pink and flabby. Oh, okay, so quite a bit. I think we'll conduct a few experiments. On what? Not, not on us? Oh, right, you mean the randomizer here. It is the prize of the universe, and it will soon be ours. Oh, well, you're welcome to it, mate. I assume you do know how to work it. You, you just push the... Silence, Earthman. We do not need your help. We are a superior race. Ah, okay, thought so. A fascinating plaything, most ingenious. The Earthmen are not as stupid as I thought. Well, actually, it was built by a very clever Earthman indeed. <laughs> not, not me, I hasten to add. Anyway, let's see what we've got today. Okay, well, it's Captain Scarlet with... He's really interesting. Uh, yes, with... Nothing pink and flabby about him. No, no, I, I suppose not. With Seek and Destroy. What do you say to that, pink people? So, welcome back to Captain Scarlet on the Randomizer, and indeed welcome to a rather special installment, actually, for the Randomizer. You see, I'm watching this series at the moment, and I have saved Seek and Destroy... Having seen it come up in my uh, list of upcoming randomizer episodes, I have saved it to watch with all of you today. And if you're wondering what uh, order I'm actually uh, watching the series on, on this rewatch, I am... Well, I started out with the um, the uh, broadcast order, which is the sort of default um, DVD and Blu-ray order these days. Then I decided that actually I'd rather prefer to watch it in ITC recommended order, because that was the first order I uh, ever saw it in. So I switched halfway, which... Uh, if you know anything about the episode order of these things, is um, it's not really a, a, a compatible way to uh, to um, to view the series. So I'm actually watching Seek and Destroy in between Fire at Rig 15 and Flight to Atlantica, which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, there we go. So you're very welcome to join me on my Captain Scarlet rewatch. On your way, Mr. Fairfield. Someone's been bugging me. What's that? Well, the managing director of a company doesn't usually supervise the loading. I told you before, there's a lot of money involved. Right. You say these crates contain millions of dollars worth of equipment that I just drive them out and dump them, miles from anywhere. What gives? Listen, Jackson, you're paid to drive, so get going. All right. Sorry I asked. So I waffled all over the uh, loading of this truck. This is a uh, Fairfield... Uh, is it Fairfield Aircraft Company? Uh, Mr. Fairfield himself is supervising the loading of this very, very large crate onto an even larger truck. As you heard, the truck driver is a bit, uh, a bit bemused by the whole thing. Fairfield Engine Company, that's it. And this truck is just one of those incredible supermarionation design ideas that uh, would be completely impractical in real life. It just takes up the entire road. Although there is a... Uh, car parked in the lay-by here and I believe this uh, truck cab set is probably a reworking of the uh, uh, nuclear transporter from Big Ben Strikes Again arriving at an empty warehouse in the middle of nowhere and I love this music as well this 0.783 theme which doesn't quite fit the sort of subject matter of uh, transporting uh, cargo from a, a company, but uh, it's just so glorious. It makes anything, anything seem important and grand. That's it, dumped the crate alongside a couple of other crates in this warehouse. The driver's uh, still a bit suspicious of what's going on here. Meanwhile, another car has pulled up outside. Worth millions? I wonder. Thinking of looking inside. Oh, that's such a cool shot of black. No, I... Uh, I was just checking. Good, Jackson. I like a man who can keep a secret. Sure. Oh, sure. I can keep my mouth shut. I know you will, Earthman. <laughs> And that's it for Mr. Jackson. 
Black's having a good day so far, and he does look very cool in the black jacket and the black shades. He doesn't always wear shades that often. There we go, chucking down a, a bottle of gasoline on a curiously, on a floor that already seems to have gasoline on it, which I never quite understood. He's going to talk to the place. This is the voice of the Mr. Arms. We will continue to take our revenge. You started the shockwave with the attack on our Martian complex. This act of aggression will be avenged. We intend to kill one of the Spectrum Angels. Spectrum Angels, one of you will die. That feels like one of those um, sort of new Doctor Who things. Someone will die, <laughs> but not really. And um, yeah, that's uh, I think one of the one of my main problems with this episode. And as we're going to discover as we go along, unfortunately, I'm not the hugest fan of this one. Um, but I do like that. Um, that sort of, um, not sting, but uh, the sound of the angel, familiar angel music in the fire as we, uh, as one side of the, one of the crates collapses and we see one of the interceptors, we find out, aha, that's what's in this warehouse. Angel interceptors. Well, gentlemen, you've heard the latest Mistron threat. They intend to try and kill one of the angels. Yes, Colonel, we've heard. And with Destiny on vacation in Paris, she's the most likely target. I think you're right. Paris is a scary place. Contact her without success. I just called the hotel again, Colonel, but she's still not there. Well, there's only one thing for it. Captain Scarlet, Captain Blue, I want you to fly to Paris immediately. Yes, sir. S.I.G., Colonel. Destiny Angel must be escorted back to the comparative safety of Cloud Base. <laughs> I love the use of his word comparative there. It's like, yeah, well, this place is a bit of a death trap, but uh, it's got to be safer than Paris. Oh, dear. So, yeah, I don't know why Destiny wouldn't have some kind of communicator on her. I know she doesn't have a Spectrum cat mic, but you'd think they would have, like, a portable thing at times like this. The hotel first. Right. She may be back. Wherever she is, we've got to find her before the Mr. Aunt. Ah, and she's staying in, um... Well, she's staying in this building that uh, cropped up a few times in Scarlet. Uh, I think this is one of those um, trans-TV towers from Thunderbirds Argo, from a deleted scene in Thunderbirds Argo, which was reused quite a bit throughout Scarlet and Joe. She also appears to be staying in the bedroom occupied by the Director General of the United Asian Republic from Winged Assassin. Destiny? Director General? Destiny. Yeah, same bed, same mirror. No luck. She's not here. Well, if I know Destiny, she's probably out shopping. Because woman. Wait, what's this on the table? Uh, Café de la Paix. Matchbook. Lead. Let's check it out. So we're reusing some uh, Turn right at French the street things here from uh, previous episodes. Oh, and I, I believe this uh, café exterior that we're finding Destiny at now Curiously enough, the uh, waiter who's watching her is the Director General of the United Asian Republic. Yeah, I believe the exterior of this cafe is uh, the one from uh, Thunderbird's Perils of Penelope. Anyway, Destiny mm, très joli. has been shopping because, you know, she's a woman. And that was uh, a sort of like an angel. unexpected bit of, uh, well, I suppose not sexism, but sort of s sexual stereotyping for this show, which uh, it very rarely did. The Colonel will be relieved. I'll get her. I suppose if uh, if they'd gone on holiday, we would have seen them Destiny. trying to close their suitcases, and they would all have had ten suitcases each because woman. The angel is she safe? Yes, she's fine. Captain Scarlet's with her now. Good. I drive straight to the airport. I want you all back on cloud base as soon as possible. I'm going to give you all a big hug. The Misterons have threatened to kill one of the angels. Kill one of us? I'm afraid so. Captain Blue and I have orders to escort you back to cloud base immediately. Human hand, human hand helped Destiny up there. Oh, wait. My perfume. I'm starting to see human hands more and more now. I think you can you can kind of sense when a hand is there helping the puppets along. But they don't make hollow threats. And it's not just in HD. I'm starting to notice it in, in SD things as well. 
Anyway, back at the warehouse, lots of uh, vehicles from Thunderbirds have come to put out the Fast fire. As possible, but it was no use. The fire was out of control. Thank you, Chief. I'm sure you did everything possible. Now, the whole warehouse and its contents is a complete write-off. Was there any highly combustible content in the crates? The crates contained aircraft for the Spectrum organization. I see. The design is top secret. No one factory holds a complete set of drawings. My plant is responsible for the manufacture of the engine. When they've been fitted to the aircraft, I crate them up and leave them in this warehouse. The next company is the last in line. They pick them up for final flight test, spraying, and delivery to cloud base. I like this idea as well that they're produced in stages. Again, it's a it's a callback to. Um, there obviously will have to be a full investigation. What we saw in in Thunderbirds that it, uh, the Thunderbird machines were assembled by buying components from different companies. Hey, they were low enough and fast. What were they? If I didn't know better. I'd say they were those three angel aircraft destroyed in the fire. Uh-oh. And it's nice as well that because they're not uh, finished, they're not, they've not been sprayed yet, they are, they are just this uh, gunmetal grey. Um, there's the Mr. On Rings. And um, there was something recently where this uh, Fairfield Electronics thing came up. Um, what was... Oh, right. Yeah, that. Um, I, I... Yeah that thing. Let's just say there's new Jerry Anderson stuff happening right now. Maybe. The three Angel aircraft and the warehouse were completely destroyed. There's no doubt. <laughs> oh, let me check. Oh, no, wait, they weren't completely destroyed. What was I thinking of there? I have a feeling this is the work of the Misterons. Oh. He says that about everything. But yeah, in in the uh, the grey colours as well, the, these angel, these misteronized angels do look very sinister. We'll be at the airport in about fifteen minutes. S I G, Captain Lou. Captain Scarlet, is anything wrong? I don't know. I just have a feeling that we're in danger. Did anything unusual? And this was a, this was one of his abilities that didn't last too long into the series. So as I said, watching this between uh, Rig Fifteen and Atlantica, it's a bit strange seeing this again here. Some danger, and it's very near. Wouldn't be that perfume you got. Stop the car. What? I can't explain, Captain. Just stop the car. <coughs> Get out of the car and take cover. I don't understand. Don't argue. Just do as I say. Oh, that's a lovely shot. I like in... Um, I, I think this is a thing that you Angel see in Thunderbird 6 and also quite a bit in this show. Aerial shots of aircraft flying from above the aircraft looking down on the countryside. Those are gorgeous. Anyway, Scarlet and Co are now in a ditch at the side of the road. They're Misteron's destiny, and they're carrying out their threat. Under attack from the Misteron Angel Jets. Thank you, Captain Scarlet. I understand the situation. I think. The Misterons have taken over three Angel aircraft, and these are now flying booby traps. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Launch all Angels. But, Colonel, the Misteron threat. Get them skyborne, Lieutenant. I like that as well. It's like, you, how can you send the angels into combat when you know there's a threat against them? This is, you know, it, it wasn't just destiny. This was like a plan within a bigger plan. We thought one of them was just in danger. Now we're potentially looking at losing four of them. Uh, everybody but Symphony, in fact. Melody, Harmony, and Rhapsody are off to the rescue. Colonel White, the Mr. On jets are still overflying the area. Well, what do you want me to do about it, Captain? Spectrum Angels are on their way. Yay! I like as well the occasional moments we cut back to the Angels and there's proper heroic music. At our present speed, we should be at the grid reference in four minutes. SIG Melody. I also love the shots of the Angel cockpit. Someone, one of the characters talking and you see a model of another Angel being flown alongside them. Lovely attention to detail. This is Colonel White. You are about to engage three aircraft identical in every detail to your own. They have already made one unsuccessful attempt to kill Destiny. I know that you would rather meet them in straight combat than wait on cloud base for an attack. I have absolute faith in your ability and ultimate victory. Thank you, Colonel White. I adore that moment. I don't know what it is. I think just for once the colonel seems genuine in in his sort of crazy speeches that he gives it's also rare to see him praising any of properly praising any of the spectrum personnel and uh, i also find that as the years go by 
Although Rhapsody has always been my favourite of the Angels, and I think she always will be, I really find I'm starting to like Melody more and more. Uh, I, I think Sylvia does a really good job with that character and, and making her different from from obviously uh, Penelope. That was just a range find. I've heard some criticism of this episode saying, oh, it's all about destiny, but not really, because she's stuck in a ditch for most of the episode. It's like this is it. No, look. So it's nice that there is a focus on, on angels other than her. And uh, yeah, Melody's in, in charge here. Leader. Destiny, Captain Blue and Captain Scarlet are near the Rex Spectrum Saloon. The mister on jets must not be allowed to attack them. S.I.G. Melody. And I have heard some people say that they don't immediately recognise that that is the same woman who did the voice of, of Penelope. And uh, yeah, I think I, I really like Melody. Here they come. I wish she had more to do, really. So now the angels are engaging in combat with the Mr. On Angels. Three of them, and three on the other team. Keep your heads down. a fire and a miss from Melody. That easy. So who's going to get the first kill in here? Well, it looks like Harmony might uh, might just do it. Whom Harmony, who I, I don't think is anybody's favourite of the Angels. I could be wrong if there are some Harmony fans out there. I do hope there are, because she's just shot down the first, first of the Mistron jets. Good old Harmony. One down, two to go. Oh, I'd give anything to be up there with them. I feel so helpless just sitting here. Now, going back to something that I believe I mentioned in passing earlier, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this episode. In fact, when the when Captain Scarlet came out on DVD... These little old sights. ...back in 2001... Oh, I have never looked forward to a DVD release more than I had of, of this show when it first came Bandit out. Bandit on your tail, Melody. S.I.G. Rhapsody. It's not polite to creep up behind a lady. Oh, there we go. I, Melody, you are so cool. Why don't more people love Melody? Yeah, this is a very fun thing she does here, where she does the loop the loop and comes back down behind the Mr. On Jet. Anyway, yes, going back to the uh, the DVD release, it was due out on a Monday, and for some reason, whoever I ordered through, I think I ordered through Black Star. Do you remember Black Star in the UK? Uh, they were a very nice um, company to, uh, to order from. I remember one Christmas they sent... Uh, they sent out VHS copies of It's a Wonderful Life to uh, to all their regular buyers, which must have cost them a pretty penny. Anyway, the release was due out on the Monday. I didn't actually get mine through the post until the Friday. It was a long old week waiting for that set to arrive. But then, once I got it on the Friday, oh, I think I must have rewatched the whole series over the course of that weekend, just revisiting all of those wonderful memories of this show from my childhood. And I am almost certain that this is the episode I left until last. Not because it was one of my favourites and I wanted to save the best till last, but because I I just wanted to see the best ones first. I think I watched them in a largely random order, you know, jumping all over the place. But I'm pretty sure this was the last one I got to. I might even have seen The Inquisition. I have been hit. Uh, Harmony's down. I might even have watched The Inquisition before watching this one. Um, possibly just to get that one out of the way. But I kind of look at The Inquisition and think, oh, it's not, it's not really an episode as such. At least it's not one you can compare to the other 31 realistically. I'm pretty sure this was the last one I looked at because I just... Here comes another one. I didn't have any hugely fond memories of it, which is not to say that it is not a superb technical SIG harmony. achievement, uh, but oh no, you don't. it gets so samey. Uh, as I said, you know, even this show is not going to kill one of the angels, uh, at least not until Attack on Cloudbase. So it's rather... You know, we know no one's really going to be in danger, for one thing. But also, just the endless flying, the endless effect shots. And I feel bad for saying that, because these effects are just... 
just gorgeous to look at. This is some superb work. But um, One to go. I think the human element is completely lost in this episode. I mean, Scarlet and Blue and Destiny, they can't do anything. They're stuck in a ditch by the side of the road. Um, so we just have this seemingly endless parade of aerial footage, which, as I say, is, is superbly produced, but it is very repetitive. We know the angels are going to shoot down the Mistron jets, and we have to sit through watching that them do that three times. Okay, there's a couple of bits where the Mistrons kind of um, outthink or outsmart the angels and all. They have to change their tactics. But uh, like here, there's no dialogue. There's not even any music with this. So as gorgeous as it looks, I find this so unengaging, the second half of this episode. And also the fact that the Mistron jets are obviously unmanned. We don't even have... We don't even have, like, an antagonist as such, which I suppose is is something a bit different. Um, it is quite a striking image having these um, cockpits with nobody at the controls. But it's just... I, I'm not engaged. And I never have been engaged by this. I don't think even as a kid I was... You're diving too fast! They're not going to pull out. Yeah, even as a kid, I wasn't gripped by this. And I'm sorry, I'm really sorry to say that. I'm really sorry to say that about any Captain Scarlet episode, that it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. But this this really doesn't. Anyway, the Mr. On, last Mr. On Jet has crashed into a house. Melody has got to pull out of this dive. And she has. We also seem to be passing over some stock footage from Thunderbirds Argo. Only Melody could have pulled out of that dive. She's a great pilot. Hey, here's another member of the Melody Angel fan club. I hope there's more than just the two of us as members. Melody Angel, what's the situation? I am awesome. Mission complete, Colonel. All Mr. Ron Jets destroyed. One Angel aircraft lost. Red Harmony ejected safely. S.I.G. Melody. I also find it interesting with the angels seeing them in in seeing how each one copes in a position of being in charge. Oh well, let's get going. It's a long walk to Cloud Base. And here it comes. Oh, I I hate that music in any Anderson show, and I really hate it in Captain Scarlet. Thankfully, it was only used once. Anyway, that was Seek and Destroy, and you know, it's. It's never, ever going to be one of my favourites by a long way, and I feel so bad for saying that. I mean, especially as this is an episode where the uh, the effects team was was headed up by um, the recently departed Sean Whitaker Cook, who uh, who headed the model uh, model department in multiple episodes of this, and Joe and UFO and Secret Service, who died in January. But I think, as I've said, the effects just completely overwhelm this episode gorgeous as they are so i think being able to look at this episode and say this is the worst one of the series aside from the inquisition is is a bad thing for me to say because i don't want to say that about any episode of of any anderson show much less scarlet but i think that i can i think that being able to look at something as superbly produced as this as technically just awesome as this and say this isn't the best installment just speaks to the sheer quality of the rest of this series in any other show this would be my goodness throw every award at it in a show as awesome as the rest of scarlet is this uh, doesn't really have much to work with unfortunately <laughs> <laughs>